And of course, our top story, we're still watching this historic windstorm for you around western Washington. You've had homes and power lines hit by falling debris, leaving thousands of people without power. And you see here the tragedy that occurred. Two people dying on the east side when that huge tree crushed the car they were in on a road near Preston. A second earlier or later, they would have been probably just fine. But instead, a tragedy for them and their loved ones. We've seen utility crews working nonstop since the storm hit yesterday. But tens of thousands of people, uh, thousands of people, I should say, are still without power right now with more powerful gusts expected today. Puget Sound Energy reporting right now nearly 25,000 people without power right now. 10,000 Seattle City Light customers, nearly 2,000 people in Snohomish County and about 200 people in Lewis County also without power. Grays Harbor, though, says they're down to zero power outages. They had about 5,000 this morning, so we know crews are working on them around the clock. State troopers are working as well, responding to dozens of weather-related calls over the past 24 hour, including, as you see here, power poles down, street lights out, debris in the roads. Well, one trooper, Rocky Oliphant, saying that since yesterday, they have responded to more than 30 crashes in Snohomish County alone. A lot of that was trees. It was also power poles, power lines, and us other debris. Uh, the, the brunt of that, most of it came from Snohomish County. We had 25 collisions in Snohomish County and 15 blocking incidents in Snohomish County. Uh, the worst of that was actually on State Route 524 between Mill Creek and Bothell. Troopers are reminding drivers, if you come across an intersection without lights... Treat it like a four way stop and always be careful of any down power lines. Do not try to drive over them. East Marginal Way is closed today after the storm toppled more than a dozen power poles right near Boeing Field. Our Steve Salise live now at South Park Bridge. Steve, do we have any idea when that bridge will reopen? It's going to be a while, Steve. We're here on Marginal Way. Like you said, it is closed. And you can see why it's closed. We've got power lines down behind us, power poles down behind us. And so these crews are out here battling the wind, trying to get these poles cleaned up. So here's exactly what's going on here. These poles and these lines fell on Sunday afternoon during that historic windstorm that blew through western Washington. It didn't cause a major power outage here, but what it did cause is traffic issues for anybody who normally travels through this area. Marginal Way South is now shut down between 14th Avenue South and South 86th place. It's happening in both directions. Meantime, SDOT has shut down South Park Bridge with the earliest reopening. The earliest reopening expected to be on Tuesday. Now, we're about a mile away from an incident which happened back in April of 2019 here on Marginal Way. 26 power lines or power poles came down during that storm and that incident injured two people. So Seattle City Light said shortly after that those poles had deteriorated and at the time they had developed a plan to reduce their risk. Now just a short time ago we just heard back from Seattle City Light. I just got this email. I'd like to share it with you. It says that uh, this is again uh, this area here is a mile away from what happened back in 2019. Here though at this spot these poles were inspected in August of 21, and they discovered that three of these poles had deteriorated in some way, and they were being designed and permitted for replacement. So this was an area they were aware of. They were addressing it, but did not expect that storm like many of us did as it blew through. We're going to try to give more details on what happened here when this area might open up, and we'll have it for you hopefully tonight at 4 o'clock right here on King 5 News. For now, we are live in Seattle. Steve Solis. King 5 News. Thank you, Steve. And as you know, from anchoring our coverage over the weekend, sadly, two people were killed in the storm yesterday. Around 3 in the afternoon, a tree fell along Preston Fall City Road, crushing that white car that was just driving through. Think about that. Two seconds before, two seconds after, they're fine. And instead, an unspeakable tragedy. That tree trunk measured eight feet across. First responders say they noticed some pumpkins in the trunk of the car. Just putting a little bit of a personal touch on it. They're urging everyone be careful heading out in the next few days. These storms will continue to hit throughout the Northwest. But what really makes me take pause and my heart go out to people is the fact that uh, having had a look at the car, I see two pumpkins in the back that probably need carving and my heart goes out to the families. We don't know yet who the two people inside the car were or how old they were, but we do know the medical examiner will ultimately release their identities publicly. In Issaquah, there are still several downed trees. This is along 228th Avenue, which was blocked for several hours as crews worked to clear these toppled power lines as well. A power outage leaving neighbors, businesses, and a retirement community with no electricity. 
fingers and hope and pray that they're not going to come down near you, but you know, it's one of the beauties of the Northwest, yet it's a risk too. We were thinking about putting in a generator yesterday, <laughs> probably like most of the people up here. We just haven't gotten around to it yet. Well, the Issaquah School District closed Issaquah High School, Issaquah Middle School and Clark Elementary because those schools have no power. People living along the Washington coast have been getting hit the hardest. No question about that. Kind of see as the, the winds are coming here and then just crushing around anyone who's trying to drive around. The National Weather Service is issuing a high wind warning with gusts that could peak around 70 miles per hour. Our Drew Mickelson reporting from Ocean Shores. It's been a wet storm, but really the wind is the story blowing sand straight to the north, knocking out trees and knocking out power for thousands who live near the beach. Two days of high winds has meant two days of power outages. Sunday, most of ocean shores was in the dark. And then overnight into Monday, high winds shut off the power for 6,400 more homes up and down the Washington coast. But as nasty as it may seem, it's actually an attraction for some. Oh, the wind is awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. been windy. We, we like it. You yeah. know, we just like the, the beach. You know, we just love the shore. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been fine. I love it. I live for this. Are you crazy? Probably. <laughs> some people say I am. Skip Radcliffe is a photographer, and his backyard is his studio. It's just beautiful, especially if you get the sand when it's blowing up onto a stump, a root wad. It's gorgeous. While this storm may be historic in some ways, folks who live out here say this is part of the deal. And a lot of them have generators just for days like today. In Ocean Shores, Drew Mickelson, King 5 News.